Yes, I'm a University of Sydney fellow. It's similar to DECRA okay. fellowship for, for three years. Uh, thank you, Frank. So uh, my topic is related to optimization and uh, we'll link Bayesian inference and MCMC based sampling methods with optimization in this talk. So uh, we know the, the green challenge of optimization. We have a lot of so that we can also okay. Sorry. Okay. Oh, over there. <laughs> no, no, it's fine. It's, it's fine. It would be a problem. I don't like to do this. Okay. So we have a green challenge of optimization where we, uh, we have a lot of uh, free parameters in models, uh, in geoscience scientific models. And uh, and uh, in such models, the, there's a difficulty in getting data as well. Data is sparse and limited, and uh, and the search for good optimization strategies and sampling strategy strategies is is in need. So uh, we know that there are a number of challenges when challenges when it comes to optimization. We have uh, the problem of. Uh, uh, large scale parameter optimization, and there are other challenges such as uncertainty, quantification. Uh, for example, when you uh, run optimization algorithms, it depends which, how you start, and if you are not lucky enough, you may not really reach the optimal solution or near optimal solution. So, how do we quantify uncertainties around that? And hence, Optimization on its own is not, not usually used in geoscience models. Uh, as opposed to optimization, we have Bayesian inference. So Bayesian inference is, you could, you could visualize it as something similar to optimization, and it's called, uh, and, and uh, the process, like in evolutionary algorithms, you have evolution, In here we have sampling, and basically it's all about proposing new solutions and evaluate a fitness function in evolutionary, in evolutionary algorithms, or optimization algorithms, you evaluate a fitness function. Whereas in Bayesian inference, you have a likelihood, likelihood function that you evaluate. And uh, the idea is uh, during the, the sampling process, all those accepted solutions, a number of solutions are accepted and some are rejected. And the, all the accepted solutions become part of the posterior distribution. Um, I will go further uh, about the posterior distribution here. So uh, we, have, we have some data, or there's a model, and there's some prior knowledge, and there's a likelihood that kind of is a measure that fits, uh, that is, is a measurement of evaluate in how good is your proposed uh, solutions and uh, basically Bayesian inference is implemented via MCMC or Markov chain Monte Carlo sampling methods and this MCMC method similar to evolutionary algorithms sometimes like people say you, you use a genetic algorithm then there's like but there are dozens of genetic algorithms so similarly in MCMC methods there are dozens of uh, MCMC sampling methods and all have their own strengths and limitations. And uh, in the past, uh, mostly, if you look at the geoscience literature, a lot of uh, work in inversion with forward models has been uh, done uh, using MCMC methods. So uh, MCMC methods are quite popular. So uh, Bayesian inference is based on Bayes theorem and uh, uh, as explained earlier, depends on the, the, the fundamental principle is about uh, uh, about uh, it's a it's a methodology to implement uh, Bayesian inference and uh, what uh, uh, strategy you are going to use between several possible models, possible models that have possible 
uh, solutions uh, and uh, likelihood is a uh, function is a way to evaluate uh, or determine how good is your solution. So here is an example. Uh, before I go there, uh, I will show you this. So, so uh, this is an example of a sampling uh, algorithm, uh, which is used, MCMC uh, sampling algorithm, a very simple one, which is used uh, for a very simple problem. It's a one dimensional problem. There's just one parameter to optimize. And what this is, this is basically all the possible iterations or proposals of that parameter. So it's a basically a plot of all the possible uh, proposals of that parameter and, uh, and those that are accepted actually, those proposals that, that, that are accepted over time. And uh, these are called samples and in evolutionary algorithms you, you call this uh, 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 generations, for example. So for each, for that parameter, you can take a histogram at the end of the sampling, and that histogram is basically your distribution. So rather than rather than at the end of the sampling, you have like you, at the end of optimization, you have one value. For for example, if this was a if you were using a hill climber to do this, probably perhaps the value would be something around four, let's say. But now because you have incorporated all the history of all those proposals, and now it's a distribution, it's a histogram. Basically, you have a, a, a Gaussian distribution here with a mean of something around four, right? And so the reason you have a distribution is because in this dis with this distribution, you can have the, the, the confidence interval and you can see the uncertainty. Like, so uh, there you have a 95% you know those the, the, all the, the 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 way to calculate uh, the way you calculate uncertainties you can uh, as you do when you are doing multiple experiments what you do in optimization uh, uh, literature instead of doing one experiment you do like hundred experiments with different initial points right starting with and at the end then you calculate a mean and a standard deviation whereas Bayesian inference is Kind of going, not is not about doing multiple experiments. You just do one experiment, and that whole mean and standard deviation you could think of it is just calculated in one experimental run. And this uh, this distribution at the end is called the posterior. Sampling is the, the algorithm where you are proposing new, uh, you are proposing solutions, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, let's say that you are just having a one parameter problem, right? So this is basically all the proposals, like, you know, once it was one, this is not the fitness. Okay. This is just the parameter proposals. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, this is the dish, uh, yes, yes, sorry, yes, in the optimization literature you say decision variable. This is the, just the decision variable. So it's basically a history of all the proposed solution for the decision variable. So in, in, in uh, evolutionary algorithms, you have a lot of proposed solutions, but a number of, a significant portion of them are discarded, right? When you have a new population takes over the old population. A significant so so in evolutionary algorithm it's a population based strategy where this is uh you could see it is a it's more close to simulated annealing it's just a one solution based you know one vector that you're working with you're not working with a population and uh, basically you have to propose the step one is you propose new uh new uh decision variables which is the theta and then you uh, calculate the likelihood, and the likelihood is calculated by the fitness function. In this case, the, li uh, the likelihood function resembles the fitness function. And then you accept that, li uh, that proposal with a, uh, with a probability, and if it is accepted, it is part of your chain. 
is part of your current, it becomes your current value. Or if it is rejected, it is basically discarded. Okay, yes. Uh, in that kind of uh, distribution uh, sample that you showed there, uh, you have a, you have a population there, or is it just one? Just one. So how, uh, why it uh, shows different numbers, different tetas for uh, different for any iteration? Th these things? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it so there is a for just one there is a let's say a dis uh, there's a prior distribution in this case let's say that the so so going here just here so so you have a prior distribution from which you are drawing so you basically randomly choose uh, mm -hmm. the distribution generates random numbers right so that prior distribution basically generates uh, your uh, and basically it could be like it's probably a distribution prior distribution could be like mean of uh, five and a standard deviation of variance of two or one something like that so that's why it's kind of giving a, a range of values right and all of these are different samples yeah so yeah the same variable yes like it's like a, a one thousand you know you draw a thousand times basically and, and so you determine who is the acceptable uh, variable uh, is basically based on the likelihood function the like likelihood function yes so so this this kind of uh, explains further your likelihood this is your likelihood which means it's the true posterior distribution right and your your prior that you you have this prior distribution from where you will be sampling and then over time, over some time, the prior, you stop sampling and you kept on evaluating from the uh, posterior, uh, from the likelihood. And then you, with the with the knowledge that you gained through the sampling process, the distribution changed as well. So, so you could think of it as that, that uh, in, in optimization, the first value, uh, let's say the true value for that problem is five, right? But the first value that you propose is two. But after optimization strategy, the value that you get got is four, right? Because you even in optimization, you don't really get the two value in many cases. Right? So, so it's basically the the first value that you started that that is can be seen as a prior information. So uh, the most, uh, the yes, the yes, 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 basically. And every time, every time you propose a new solution, the likelihood takes in account of the prior distribution as well. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I mean, there's a lot of, uh, I mean, technical details in here, and it takes, it will take a month to kind of figure it out. So, um, so, say that it's acceptable and continues uh, in, the, in the sample or is this Yeah, you have one likelihood? Yes, likelihood is just your, it's, it is resembles your fitness function. So, so this is a, like in, in optimization, you say a fitness landscape you have for two variables. So, this is a likelihood landscape, right? And this is a very much a, it's a very difficult likelihood landscape as you can see, and uh, and you can be trapped in many of these local meanings, right? So this is of a, a solid edge evolution model, which is uh, uh, which I will explain further in the following stage, the slides. So this is basically the the overall of uh, of Bayesian inference. And uh, let me just show you a quick uh, video of uh, of evolution of a solid earth evolution model known as Badlands, which is used to simulate topography development, uh, landscape evolution over time. And in this case, it's like 60 million years of how the continent of Australia changed over time. And to run this may take like two days. And there are a lot of uh, uh, 
three parameters that you need to find out. Like currently, Earth scientists don't have information of what rainfall values were used throughout 60 million years or what is the uh, yes, rainfall and what is the erodibility, what is the, and a number of other environmental parameters. So the goal is to find these values, uh, near optimal values of these values. And instead of using, essentially, instead of using, uh, you could see the, the aging million years. Optimization, we use vision inference to find them. But the general framework is very much similar to optimization. And at some point of time, around 60 million years, so, so this is, these places, uh, some of these places went underwater actually. All right, so this is an example of a, a solid air evolution uh, problem. And this is a very big problem. So we, we, for inference, because we don't have, to have that much of time, we have the computational power, but uh, we want to demonstrate that it works for smaller problems. So we take a snapshot of a very small area. For example, in, in this is an ex example where we just look at one million years of evolution of uh, a South Island, an area in South Island that's like about 120 by 130 kilometer area in South Island. The mountains you could see and it goes to the sea and uh, it, it's around start with two, uh, the maximum is 2000 and two by two uh, bottom is 2000 and after 50 percent of the time basically the the mountain kind of goes down because there's rainfall and it erodes the mountain and then you have after 750,000 years you have uh, the mountain is like now 1000 meters and then at present day the mountain is uh, around 500 meters so actually we do not really know we do not really know what the mountain looked like 1 million years ago so just for simulation purpose what we did we took the current uh, a mountain uh, topography and we 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 ran badlands model for after one million years it will look like that basically that mountain is that, that that's a lot of guessing right mm -hmm. no so it's it's not uh, so just for simulation purpose yeah. we so there are let's say six parameters one is precipitation value and erodibility value so we handpicked those parameters yeah. So based on those parameters, this is how the mountain will look like after a million years. And now our problem is, the inversion problem is to find, uh, to let the Bayesian inference algorithm find out those values that we fixed. Okay, okay, okay. So in that way, we will know that if the methodology works, you see? So uh, this is just to demonstrate because in the real world problems, we don't, re we will not really know what those values are. So the problem is basically, you have, uh, you you have to match. So we take this this uh, value after after one million years, the topography, and then that we take it as a as a real world topography and then we try to match it with what baselands produces and we try to see the differences between them and that is basically our fitness function. So your mapping function would be the topography of with the current yes. mountain? Yes, the current mountain, the topography of the current mountain uh, that which is the real world, uh, real value, Re by real value means that what is out there actually versus what is produced by badlands is the badlands model is supposed to simulate from the past and reach to the current value right but if the rainfall value let's say the current value this value has a, used a rainfall value of 2.5 but if the rainfall value is one you will not have this same shape it will be a different shape 
So that means that the the and the your likelihood function will basically basically take that into. But what does it mean to rainfall that you want? Because we are having rainfall essentially over many years or whatever. So it also depends on for the the heavy rainfall and Yes, yes, it's a good question actually. So at the moment we are, yes. Yeah, so I will, I will address this. At the moment we are just looking at uh, we are we oversimplified the yeah. model, you know. So we are not looking at climate change at the moment. We are like, what if the rainfall of two point five is throughout? Let's say we average it out. So at every every. Every year, basically, the same rainfall value is used. So basically, I've introduced badlands already, and it, it it stands for Basin and Landscape Dynamics Model, and it's written in Python, and it's an in-house developed model at the University of Sydney. But there are a lot of other models out there in Fortran, C, and others, but this is the main one in Python. And uh, basically, this is the uh, I kind of gave an overview of the MCMC sampling process. You initialize, you draw parameters from the priors, and then you we are just using uh, so our, uh, unlike evolutionary algorithms, we use sophisticated ways to propose new solutions using crossover, mutation, and many of it. We are just doing a random walk proposal. Whatever is the current, we just add a small random noise to all those values, and then we give these values to to badlands, and then let let badlands model evaluate the likelihood, and then based on the metropolis acceptance criteria, we either accept or reject, and this process goes on for thousands of samples. And basically, this is another way of uh, describing the procedure. And basically, this is the acceptance probability, which is based on the Metropolis Hastings. And basically, this is uh, the probability of uh, the present. The P stands for present. Uh, uh, sorry, the P stands for probability of the pro uh, for proposal. So the theta proposal, which is your decision variables proposals, based on the data. And the Q is the the prior, taking in account of the prior of the proposal and the prior of the current over the the current theta and the data current and the 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 q is the priors so uh i mean i don't have that much time to go into detail this could be a future tutorial probably but uh, the 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 essentially it always means Yes, because you the thing is because again you accept with a with yeah. a with a yeah you draw from a uniform again and so that kind of takes into account of some getting you know like getting out of the local minima. So yeah, but it's only depending on this ratio. Actually. Yes. Yes. So uh, the the other thing is here uh, to catch is that if it is if it is uh, uh, accepted, then your current set of decision variables becomes part of the chain. If it is not accepted, then whatever was the last accepted value is part of the chain. Okay, so this is basically this. This is basically you 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 kind of collect the history. You, you kind of write it to a file, or you collect it as a history or vector, and then from there you calculate. You you demonstrate your histogram, and that's so your posterior. So for every part of this thing, I do different samples for my model, right? Instead of all right? because we have a part of this thing, we accept the individual distribution. Yes, and then I'm calling whatever your simulation type of thing is, and then what is evaluated. Yes, so the, the yes this yes so you add basically let's say example rainfall of one and erodibility of one that goes into the badlands model. Badlands model kind of produces a final topography after one million years, mm -hmm. and that is compared with the actual topography. But, but why do you call this now 
uh, somehow it, it's essentially just a cognitive setting that you are changing as in the evolution strategy or yes. it's just a perfect type. Right? Yes. And then essentially it just gives you the quality how good the model is. Yes. Compared to how good was your model for the previous part of the study. Yes. What do these probabilities do there? Because it, I, I could just do the score, right? So it, essentially it's also it means what it's supposed to do. Huh? It, so, so if you go back one slide, so I could just call it I call my solution X and the perturb one Y, and yeah. then I just put it into the model and if I'm speaking better, then I accept it for sure. Otherwise, I have a certain probability of going uh, within the old right? Because the model is also putting in the solution to y star is some of the score. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah, yes. So, so, uh, so I, what I don't see is why do I need all these probabilities up around that? The if I call it just f of x and f of y, it's right. So yeah, what the balance model gives you, yes, because it essentially gives you a landscape, and you have to score how far it is away from the landscape that you want. Yes, the the the, the thing is that uh, yes. So so basically, this whole framework you could have an optimization mm -hmm. framework basically that does the same thing. Mm -hmm. And um, but it's, is that is that if you're putting in the solution, then you're doing samples of the landscape. Essentially, in this way, you compare and compare. Yeah. the likelihood. That's, yes, that's where it's coming in, right? So that's why you said. So 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 yes. Yeah, so, so so the idea is that uh, for each time you are proposing something, mm -hmm. you have to take in account of your priors. So this is the 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 cues are your the the, the prior information. The priors is of the distribution from which you are uh, picking, yeah. from which you are sampling. So, which is this is not taken in account in evolutionary algorithms generally. Like when you propose something, it's most of a heuristic type of proposal. So, so if, if the priors, the priors are a way of kind of it penalizing your proposals. So, it kind of affects your likelihood calculation actually. So if if you propose something but your priors basically the prior says that this is beyond the range of proposal it kind of kind of penalizes your uh, because because this what was this c is current that's the current okay so it's based on the third one and why do you switch roles on for the third based on c which is the new one that is so, so there's no there's no dependence on this new Right. Yeah, that is uh, that is done. Uh, I think to to taking account of this detailed balance condition. Okay. Well, the, because I uh, I can see that you want to base the new parameter based on what you had before, but the other two essentially the other way around. They don't have a relation in the sense. Yes, because they haven't been constructed based on something that you had before. Yes. So. Uh, yeah, I think that, that that part is done uh, to to take into account of the detailed balance. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think I have kind of gone over this. Uh, the, 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 uh, I guess the next slide was giving more information. So uh, the D is the you could see where is the pros posterior probability of theta d over theta is the likelihood function so this is the likelihood and so you have the posterior probability and then you have the prior belief and over the the data yeah so uh basically how is this uh, base law is uh, derived is just uh, the basic uh, probability uh, laws there, the multiplication law and the, uh, which uh, uh, probability of I intersection B is probability of I multiplied by probability of B 
over IE. And that kind of goes on top. And uh, basically, this basically takes over here. And then you have probability of B at the bottom. So, uh, furthermore, further details there. Uh, but I, I, I want, I have the other things to talk about. So I will. Yeah, yeah. I want to talk about yeah so so actually so as you as, as you know that I, I have stressed that it's computationally very expensive these models and uh, we need better ways to do things so that's why we need to use distributed com or parallel computing and so parallel tempering is another type of M mcmc approach which kind of uh, executes all those samples in parallel of, over different cores let's say a multi-core implementation, you can have also a single core implementation. And the idea of parallel tempering is that some of those, uh, so each of whatever is running in each core is called a replica. So all the uh, different replicas have different temperature uh, and the likelihood is divided by the temperature basically. So what happens, those, uh, the replicas with the higher temperature, so your temperature later, there's a temperature later, you could have like one, two, three, and it goes to 10. If you have 10 replicas, that's the simplest linear temperature later. And so the temperature with 10, basically, uh, you, the probability of you escaping a local minima there is higher, whereas the temperature of one is a normal MCMC. So it's essentially as you can use. Yes, so very simple. Yes, so it's a kind of a, a motivated by simulated annealing. But in in the process, you also have swaps between the replicas. So the solutions swap after some interval, and uh, and uh, basically each of those cores so you have a replica sampler and then each has its own bed length model and uh, after some time let's say after 20 samples or something let's say you freeze all your processes and then you have interprocess communication then you calculate the likelihood of swapping and uh, according to the mh probability again you swap and the process is repeated till uh, but uh, just a uh, note that the swap just happens between neighboring replicas in the canonical implementation which we are using. But we are not using uh, the linear temperature ladder. There's a geometric temperature ladder and that shows that it uh, achieves better. So this is, for example, for each of those different replicas, there are all these samples and then they are all combined basically uh, so that's basically the algorithm so the metropolis hastings that i showed we went over basically that is used in algorithm two in part one and the acceptance probability is computed in a very similar way as this uh, it's just that uh, instead of proposals you have i mean uh, it's, it's in relation to the to the replica. So uh, we have uh, this we did six months ago. So we had uh, a number of synthetic problems, three synthetic problems. So first was a crater problem, and this after fifty thousand years basically becomes this. And they are intermediate. The the model like for fifty thousand years it will take out fifty thousand topographies basically. So we have to turn it off, otherwise it takes you know, gigabytes of data and then produces a lot of space. And then let's say just for 50,000 topographies is one GB, then you are doing 10,000 samples. Yeah. But in your simulation, you're only interested essentially what is happening in this 50,000 years. So only if I put something in, what is essentially the active that I get? Yes, that's, okay. yes okay. to calculate the, li the likelihood is only interested in that because yeah. The, the reason we are doing that, well, it would also be, be nice to see what in between. Yes, is, like, so so the in between is the, the, the visualization that I showed that is needed. Once you do the yeah. sampling, then you plug the values yeah. in to calculate that. 
So, uh, and there's another problem, like uh, this problem has another parameter, which is the uplift, whereas these problems don't have that parameter. So this is a flat surface and after a million years, basically because Earth is, the forces down below is lifting it up, it becomes a mountain. So uh, more, uh, uh, the, the model is uh, given, uh, described in detail, basically, uh, the formulation. I mean, basically, this is what the likelihood calculation is. Uh, and it's, it's a Gaussian likelihood. So what a Gaussian likelihood means, basically, it's in a way of kind of wrapping your fitness function, which is it's like a difference of basically in a Gaussian, uh, in the formulation of the Gaussian like uh, equation, basically. If you see the Gaussian, it's something like this e to the power, you know? So in, in there, this part, if you see, this is the data minus what is of f, and f is your model, basically. So the difference is basically kind of it's raised to the power e x p, and uh, but just one one important part is that in this in this problem we have something else which is very important, which is the sediment formation, and in geology sediment is a important part. So if you, if you make a drill hole, you will find sediments in most of these areas. So in places like when the mountain kind of erodes into this, a lot of all those things that kind of got washed away, they form sediments basically. So sediments are a way to kind of constrain or look at the past. And our likelihood function for that problem, we also take in account of the sediments. The sediment is something that will be available for us to compare with in a real world problem in some of the real world problems. So if you have sediment information, and you know that, uh, so for a one million uh, year time frame, if you know that after some time you, you will, uh, you know, like after 200,000 years, that this is how your sediment looked like, the layers in the sediment. You can always compare that with what is given in the bed next, the sediment information there. And that it helps you kind of constrain and give a better evaluation of your proposal. So basically, we we did some experiments uh, on 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 these problems, and the first thing we did was to visualize how the likelihood function looks like for just for two parameters, rainfall and erodibility. And this is for the crater problem, which is a very simple synthetic problem. But uh, the the this is the continental margin problem. Those mountains, as you can see, that the, there's a huge change between them. So. The bigger problem that we found is, which, which drove a lot of confusions. So uh, at the bottom is all the, is the trace plot of all the proposals for our samples for irritability and rainfall. And on the top is the distribution, basically. And if you see, on, there's all these light lines there. Uh, this basically says this is a multi-modal distribution because here, it's a, it's, if you slice it up, there are a number of combinations of those two parameters, rainfall and per, uh, erodibility, which will give you the same surface after 50,000 years. So there are a number of combinations of these two, basically. We, 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 uh, we uh, created that topography with a, a rainfall value of 1.5. But with a value of 2.0 or 1.7, and with the erodibility of value of let's say 0 0.4, it will give the same the same surface basically. So that's a interesting part. But it is a normal thing in many geoscientific problems that you have multi-model solutions. I mean, you could have a combination of different weather patterns on different areas, which will produce the same, you know, uh, mountain erosion after a million years. Or something. So the same thing we we applied parallel tempering and we used like up till uh, from 10 to 50 cores and to see how the time kind of reduces in minutes here. So for a simple uh, continental margin problem, uh, if we have 10 cores, we have like 600 minutes. But if we have 40 or 50, we go below 
under 50 minutes. So distributed computing is a good idea. And in most of them, the RMSE is uh, kind of similar. Uh, moving on, uh, these are just uh, another table of uh, is, uh, the same things. Uh, and this is what was produced. And uh, this is uh, the sediment information. So you could imagine that there are 10 locations we chose. And basically the, predict, uh, the actual ground truth value of the sediment versus the predicted value. And the, the lines in pink are the uncertainties around it from the, from the distribution. And the same thing, uh, this is the mountain problem. And for this is the continental uh, uh, margin problem, and we did a X and a Y slice of the ground truth versus the prediction. So our prediction, the mean is uh, very much close to the ground truth, and then we have a upper bound and a lower bound that shows the uncertainties. Basically, this is one of the main things. And uh, the same thing uh, happens. So, so how do you quantify your so basically we uh, from as we are developing the distribution then we at the same time we also record the predictions actually and we just basically do a mean and a fifth percentile and 90 oh, percentile the same based, based, on the sample. based on the sample yes so the same thing is uh, shown for the mountain problem similar uh, thing and then some similar posterior distribution. So, so if you see this one and compare with the previous one, this has a lot of, uh, the trace plot is different. It's a lot of chains. Basically, why are these flat? Basically, it means that for that time, for that many samples, there's no new sample has been accepted. So a lot of times they are kind of stuck in their own local minimas. And you could see that from the likelihood surface of that problem that it's a, it's a, it's it's a, it's natural for that to happen. So you are seeing the samples with the same solution that you have in the previous in the previous one. Yes. Previous so if if year. it's a new yeah if the, no the new solution proposed is not accepted, you will just carry on with the previous solution as your current solution. Okay. Yeah, that that is what it, what it shows. Yes, yes, basically. So. Uh, so th th this is this kind of summed up uh, that part of our work and just quickly i'll try to take another five eight minutes uh so we, we submitted one or two papers and uh, it's uh, under review <clears throat> then uh, currently what i'm working on is uh, surrogate assisted baselines so uh, because of computationally expensive problem we have in geoscience there's not that much of uh, uh, you know, work done in incorporating <coughs> surrogate assisted search, which is a common thing in uh, the optimization literature and is being used with evolutionary uh, based uh, surrogate search, uh, used mostly for you know, air, space, uh, aircraft design, wingspan design, and things. One of my previous supervisor, Yu Sun Ong, uh, in NTU, he did a lot of work in this area actually. So uh, he would be quite happy if I tell him that I am working this now. <laughs> uh, so the thing is in the literature of parallel templing, there's no work where there's surrogate assisted models used. So I thought let's start to develop this, it would be quite novel, but then we kind of ran into a number of problems because we just didn't want to have surrogate assisted optimization, but we wanted to have surrogate assisted optimization on a distributed uh, computing environment. So you have now, you have like, let's say 10 cores, and then you ask them, you know, freeze all of them, and all the past information, the proposals and their likelihood, you collect from all of those cores into a master core, and there you use a neural network and one of uh, any machine learning model to train that, uh, which is a surrogate model. And then you pass, and then you have like a, a shadow surrogate model in each of those cores because I don't want the training to be happening in all the cores, but training to be happening in one core and to save more time. Then basically it passes all the knowledge to all the shadow surrogate models to all these uh, local surrogates, I call them. And in here is the main one is the global surrogate. And these, these guys just make decisions and it's active 
uh, online basically decision making by the surrogates. So the surrogates kind of you have some surrogate probability and uh, based on some probability you sometimes evaluate from the true likelihood or then you evaluate from the surrogate based likelihood. So the true likelihood maybe you take wait for one hour for the bed lens model to be run or the surrogate may be a few seconds. You know? uh, it sounds all good, but uh, for these small problems, now we have good results. For the Krita problem, the, the, so we evaluated at which interval should we be doing the training for the surrogate and uh, how much time it saves. So this zero basically means there's no surrogate, it's a federal tempering based lens on its own, and then we have some surrogates here and there and with different uh, surrogate probability, we can find that we reduce the time quite a bit. And, uh, and for the continental margin problem, a similar uh, trend so is much, seen. Much, what do you use in terms of quality? Uh, so the quality uh, in, in this, because this is small problems, we found that we did not really lose that much of quality. It's similar kind of the quality in the RMSC, like 2.25, 2.5. And when we do different runs, sometimes we have a lot of uh, fluctuations in this quality. Uh, so this is an example of uh, using surrogate and the prediction and the actual. And I think with the surrogate, we heard we have a bit more of the uncertainty. So it's uh, maybe the uncertainties increase a bit, but uh, well, yeah, so. so it again on your 50 whatever many years problem or is it a different problem? No, no it's the same problem. Okay. Same problem. We are trying to just use the same problem and then reduce the time to okay. surrogate, but at the same time try to see what the quality is so that okay. quality is not deteriorated. So this is the same. Did you use any assessment in the model? Is the present one that is very expensive to get a one solution, or they have a solution to compare a two-hour model with a model? Yes. You can know that how good is the model. Yes. 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 Yes.
what was uh, you know the temperature what was uh, the sea level and those things are the unknown parameters so uh, and uh, just uh, uh, just quickly and it could be applied to a lot of other problems and uh, another example of such a, another problem is uh, for example we want to do this in the future and this is the which is our group is very popular in G plates model of plate tectonics and it's also quite computationally expensive looks at millions of years how you see the, the article yeah and uh, Australia and uh, somewhere there is also India is somewhere there India was like an island so it's been moving you know so how they moved together how they moved apart so of the last 400 million years there's a very detailed models of these things so we want to look at those and uh, so uh, just uh, two more minutes uh, so in future work we think that uh, we could incorporate optimization algorithm in fact those forming better proposals you know because we are doing random work proposals the problem is that we we it not unlike machine learning where you have gradient information and then you play with gradients and you're a very happy person, you know. But here you don't have gradients. These these models are very complex, and so you need heuristic based approaches and evolutionary computation and meta heuristics fusion of those with these MCMC methods, parallel tempering to develop better proposal. Actually, I have one student in India who is helping me. We develop this and everything that we have developed and that I talked about is all in my GitHub repo and everything is open source. We want to have collaboration and also uh, base uh, vision framework with with badlands uh, or with uh, it. It could be applied that idea. These ideas could be applied to other problems, not geoscience problems, but other problems where you need more uh, robust uncertainty quantification. And some statisticians or some people are saying, oh, EC method will not do well because we don't have robust. And that is when you need to kind of fuse it with with, with uh, st statistical MCMC or MCMC type of approaches. So, uh, uh, Frank, your earlier question about the rainfall. Yes, so I, we are looking at that in the next project. So we will, instead of have one rainfall, we'll have region-based rainfall, especially when looking at a bigger area and also time dependent rainfall so one value will become like thousand yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> stuff like that and and then we in another project we are the the simulation that i showed you of the australian continent that one was when badlands was developed first and it was the first paper they were they kind of hand picked some values for those parameters so you, you essentially what you said now was to say that you have one parameter per, essentially the same for every part step, right? Yes. Um, so having now essentially for each year a different yes. parameter is a lot, but you could say, well, perhaps I, I instead of doing one parameter, I just give it a distribution with a mean and a standard deviation that would make your parameter setting still small. Mm. But in the simulation, you could use that to sample. Of course, then you would get different results. So you essentially, essentially you're doing a randomized simulation somehow, um, but that would be, give you something different. You would then, uh, okay, so to the rate for it's normally to be a bit well. Yeah. So, so the, well, most of it that's not the case because also the mean would shift over the year. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm, I'm looking at climate change. Every 500 or 1,000 years, there's a huge, yeah, you change every thousand years. Yeah, so we are just looking at that problem for for Papua New Guinea for for forty thousand years, and then we get you know like a detail. Yeah. So and and this way is also a way to kind of generate more paleo information or like for example paleo elevation at different you know time scale. What was the actual map? Uh, topography actually. so that is important for geoscience the other thing is it could be used to generate data for climate change studies of the value climate mm -hmm. so after you found the time dependent rainfall mm -hmm. then you could use that for some time series analysis to, you know, to predict some future trends actually so uh, basically thanking my project partners and uh, uh, we have two 
two, two, three technical reports, and then next month we'll take the work out of the surrogate. Thank you. Thank you. So basically you have so you have five or six parameters and from five those four five or six parameters you may do maps, right? And uh, then you try to change those parameters and uh, predict actually find out that what was what was the shape of that special uh, area previously, right? Yes. So you run that algorithm for each parameter yes. separately. Now all the parameters, so let's say you have five parameters, so you propose five par oh, new so parameters. Five parameters. Yes. And, okay. and you give it to Badlands model. And then based on those parameters, it kind of shows the topographic development in time. And then you take the final topography. And then compare with the actual topography of the present day. So the final one, if your parameters proposed were not good, mm -hmm. then your uh, it might not be a mountain there anymore. The mountain would have eroded, or or maybe there is a too too big of a mountain, something like that. You know? like, so the shape oh, would okay. be totally so different. Actually. Now, okay, so you have an initial vector. Yeah. You give it to your algorithm. The algorithm uh, gives you the uh, the final vector, right? And you give this final vector to the that special uh, uh, software, yeah. and it gives you the map. You see that, or right, this map uh, actually this is the current yes. position. If it's not, you initial it again. Yes. And, okay. Yes. So, for example like for a very simple problem. So this is our initial topography. And then we have, we generated this with a rainfall of 1.5 and erodibility of something, right? And then we have this river system. So if we, if you will plug a rainfall of rainfall value of one, and that's saying some other er erodibility, this river system may not be formed. So it may not have a river system here. So when you'll compare, we take this as the actual uh, topography, and then you will compare them, and then you'll say, "Oh, then uh, basically our fitness is high, you know, something like that." And it will say that basically reject that, and then give it another go. You know? So, so basically, it's very sensitive actually. Yes. Uh, and how can you be sure that your initial topography is accurate? I mean, yes, what you know with the yes. current ground, you would be present there, right? Yes. And you assume that this initial topography is accurate and you put it in your badline model with your initial vector, right? I mean, that's, a, that's a very good question, actually. And the thing is that so far in um, geoscience, the initial topography for the last 400 million years is not really there, actually. So, what they do, they take the present topography and they perturbate it a bit and they assume it is that it's a topography that was 10 million years ago or something. And the, for, for the Australian uh, continental study, I think they did some similar things and they would know that some areas, because there are some detailed studies that some areas were under the sea because they had fossil records of those areas at that many million years. So those things were are used to form the initial topography. But your question is very valid because there are, even if you have those limited information, there will be areas where you don't have any information. So what we are doing is in this uh, Papua New Guinea project that we are doing, we, in there we are not just doing time dependent rainfall, we are doing another part where we are also using this whole baseline framework to generate the, to find what the right initial topography is. Uh, so, so kind of, treat them as a grid base uh, and treat, treat the initial topography or parts of it as a decision variables actually that you are looking for. So the problem becomes a bit more, uh, more difficult. So, uh, and the whole of these approaches, if not now, probably in the coming years, uh, we, we hope that they will generate more of this value elevation maps actually, so that geoscientists can use those maps to study the past in millions of years.
Okay, so this um so this initial photography is shared uh I mean in the community, right? I mean everyone yeah. is now uh assuming the same initial photography and then try to come up with the better solution. Yes, yes. Uh, I think I think at the moment in the community there's not that much of work in the paleo. So that that area is called paleo elevation, and in paleo elevation they don't have very detailed fine grained maps of what how the topography will be. So so basically by this whole base lens is a way to generate paleo elevation maps. So because at every every year you will have a topography. And, and if if you kind of have a very comprehensive way to find all the free parameters, like for the Australian continent, you'll have 60 million uh, maps of 60 million years, you know, the topography. Yeah, what, what would happen if you run this with a some more slightly different initial topography? So it would, would give you something? Yeah, it could, it could, yeah. If you put a, if you put a river system here, they, like, like a river system here, yeah, that then it will further erode that, that system, and then you will have a very big river system here. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So the, the initial topography is an important thing actually, and uh, but uh, computationally and looking at uh, you know the large scale parameter optimization problems, even in uh, even in the you know like when you look at evolutionary computation, they run competition. They say oh, one thousand parameters. Or ten thousand parameters, but here we, if you're looking at initial topography, the resolution is that you can yeah. go. But you have to be only at the At the moment, yeah, few. Have you were you, you were doing this, this MCM essentially? Yeah, and, and it, it looked very much like I could also do a one plus la lambda evolution strategy for one power lambda. Yeah, yeah, right. So because you you would parallelize these evaluations anyway. And then you could try to learn the search direction, which you're currently not doing. Yes. Because you're currently essentially just sampling and flying around. Yes. But perhaps it would be interesting to see what is happening there. Yes, actually. So I'm I'm using this uh, parent centric crossover by evolutionary algorithm now developed, combining them with parallel tempering at the moment. Mm -hmm. But there but are other, you, other combinations you, you, can happen. Because as well. you're very simple. So you put I'm not sure how many evaluations you would do in parallel, but let's say 20 or 10 or 20. You just do a one comma 20 type of thing. You run it for the same number of essentially iterations that you're currently doing and see whether you get something better. Because it, it, it wasn't clear to me whether you need something like this metropolis exception. Do so you need the simulation meaning thing? Or because yeah. it's Essentially, your your evaluation is just based on parameters, and I'm not sure whether you need to prior for that in, in your approach. Yeah, yeah, yes, you are right. I mean, the thing is that because we were linked to this project, where uh, we had a statistician with us who is a Bayesian. Yeah, yeah, everyone likes their own approach. Yes, <laughs> so we were very constrained, and the, the the thing is, we cannot call it Bayesian if we do not follow certain rules, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, 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 well, I mean, the, the Bayesian stuff, it looked a bit artificial somehow. Yes, artificial. the prior the prior part is quite artificial, actually. So it's not, you cannot be truly Bayesian with this, uh, in 